Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, November 11th. Let me first apologize for the lateness with which this lesson was put up on our website. Uh, we had some scheduling issues, um, and actually we may um, uh, give more overviews of the lesson today, again, due to the uh, scheduling issues uh, then getting into more depth. Uh, we will be back to our normal uh, format um, next week, the third Sunday. But we are still in Unit 3, which is entitled, God Blesses and Recreates Regardless. God Blesses and Recreates Regardless from the Adult Quarterly. Our lesson title is Deception in the Family. Deception in the Family. Devotional reading is Psalm 24 verses 1 to 6. Our background scripture, Genesis 27 verses 1 to Genesis 28 verse 5. And our printed passage is Genesis 27 5 to 10 verses 18 and 19 and 21 to 29. From the adult quarterly, uh, the lesson aims or number one, identify how Jacob and Rebecca used deception to get what they wanted from Isaac. Number two, repent of times when you have deceived others, and we all have. And then number three, commit to expressing when your needs and desires to others in honor in honest rather yet loving ways in honest but loving ways the quarterly the quarterly has three major divisions after the introduction the first is a scheming mother that's covered between Genesis 27 verses 5 and 10 Second division is a deceitful son, and that's covered between verses 18, 19, and then 21 to 25. And finally, uh, the last division, a stolen blessing, and that's covered between verses 26 and 29. From the standard commentary, the lesson is simply Jacob's deception, Jacob's deception and Additional aims from the standard or number one, recount how Isaac was deceived into blessing Jacob rather than Esau and what the blessing consisted of. Number two, tell why human beings resort to deception so often instead of telling the truth. And then number three, identify the correct one, I'm sorry, identify and correct one thought process that tends to produce words and actions intended to deceive. That is your and my thought processes that tend to lead to deception. We want to identify and correct those uh, thought processes. Uh, the standard is, has three major divisions as well. The first is deception suggested, covered between chapter 27, verses 5 to 10. The second is deception starts, verses 18 and 19 of chapter 27. And then deception succeeds, verses 21 to 29 of chapter 27. We're going to read quickly our lesson text, and then we'll get into our verse-by-verse verse discussion of our lesson so we're going to, just a little, well, let me just read the lesson text and I'll give a little, well, maybe I need to give a little background before I read the lesson text. Uh, since um, our last week's lesson, which involved uh, the birth of the twins, Esau and, and Isaac, and how it was foretold before they were born to Rebecca, who 
wanted to know why she was having such a difficult time with her pregnancy that two nations were within her womb and the younger would serve the elder and that, let's let's keep that in mind as we study the lesson today no doubt she she shared this uh, word from God with Isaac uh, what's happened since that time well in verse uh, I'm sorry chapter uh, 25 of course we know that uh, if you read the chapters in between verses 25 and 27 uh, we know in 20 chapter 26 Isaac moves to Gera uh, and there is a, a famine arose in the land and Isaac uh, did something uh, identical to what his father Abraham had done when uh, he um, was confronted by Abimelech, who was a uh, Abimelech was king of uh, the Philistines, uh, and uh, uh, that was a prop, and, and Gera was part of the the Philistines territories and 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 the men looked on uh, Rebecca and she, she was very fair and uh, uh, they asked Isaac about her and she said she is my sister because he feared they would kill him and take her and it uh, happened that Abimelech happened to look out in the court Abimelech had been treating Isaac, uh, um, very, uh, very royally, if you will, uh, and he saw uh, Isaac sporting with uh, what was presumed to be his sister, and he called Isaac in and asked him why he did that. And of course, Isaac explained he feared for his life. But again, that was a uh, a uh, uh, evidence of uh, a, a lack of faith in God. And then we get to. Um, uh, chapter 27 and and chapter 27 begins with Isaac realizing that he is old uh, and we know well let, let me back up uh, there, there was one other thing that happened near the end of 26 uh, it says in verse uh, 34 that Esau uh, was 40 years old and took to wife Judith the daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and Bashemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grieve of mine unto Isaac and Rebekah. So Esau, being 40 years old, uh, took uh, two wives of the Hittites, which were, of course, part of the Canaanites. And uh, they were grieved because, uh, obviously, the parents realized that it was not God's will that um, their sons take wives of the Canaanites. Uh, and so verse 20, um, chapter 27 then begins with um, a statement that Isaac was old. Well, how old was Isaac? Well, if Esau was 40 and he was born when Isaac was 60, Isaac is 100 years old. And it says his eyes were dim, meaning he was nearly blind, so he could not see. And he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said, Here am I. In other words, he called him, intending to give him the blessing, set his affairs in order, give him the, the uh, paternal blessing before he dies. He doesn't know when he's going to die. But he asked a favor of Esau that he go out and he catch uh, some venison, which, of course, was just game meat, some type of game meat, not necessarily deer, and prepare it the way he likes, the savory way he likes, and bring it and let him eat, and then after which he will give him the paternal blessing. And so uh, that's what's covered between verses 1 and 4. Our uh, lesson text picks up at verse 5. Rebecca... Uh, Rebecca has been eavesdropping. Uh, perhaps he saw uh, Esau going into Isaac's tent and wanted to know what it was all about, but she obviously overhears the conversation 
that Isaac has with Esau. So let's pick up at verse uh, 5. We're going to read through the lesson text, and then, as I said, we'll have our verse-by-verse discussion. And Jake... So verse 5, and Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son, and Isaac went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Uh, Verse uh, 6, and Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. We skip down to verse 18. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according to, uh, according as thou bathest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And skip down to verse 21, and Esau I'm sorry, and Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Esau, I'm sorry, unto Isaac, his father, and felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother's Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be every one that curses thee, and bless be every one that blesses thee. Amen. Now, before we get into our verse by verse um, discussion of the lesson, and we're going to move through the verses uh, fairly quickly, it's important for us to understand the, that there's a difference between. A blessing and birthright, the paternal blessing and the birthright, which uh, we read in our last week's lesson, uh, Esau basically sold to his brother Jacob for some pottage or for some red stew. Uh, the birthright, of course, was uh, what was customary to pass on to the eldest son. It was the largest portion of the family's material wealth. The oldest son got a double portion of the family's material wealth. But the blessing was really the divine favor uh, that uh, uh, for the uh, a blessed and prosperous life for uh, the son and his descendants. So it was different from the, the material that the birthright conveyed to the eldest son or to the to a son it's important that we make that distinction so 
really, Esau has already sold his birthright to Jacob. And now uh, this lesson concerns the blessing, the, pr- the paternal blessing that the father will pass on. Or, and, and the blessing was basically a prophecy of what uh, would happen to that son. And, of course, uh, a, a prayer as well that God would bring these uh, things that were desired for the son to pass. So verse 5 says, And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake unto Esau his son, and it's Esau's son, you notice Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Uh, we noticed last uh, in last week's lesson that Jacob favored Esau. He loved Esau because he was a hunter and he loved the savory venison or game meat that he prepared for him. Rebecca loved or favored Jacob because he dwelt with her in the tents. And so it's odd that she would actually refer to Esau as his son. And then later we'll see she refers to Jacob as her son. Uh, so she eavesdropped and, uh, and then, uh, she knows what's going on. Uh, Esau probably hurriedly grabs his bow and his arrows and hits to the field to get the game. And verse six says, and Rebecca spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying. So she uh, basically is preparing to tell him what she heard by eavesdropping. And again, it's important to notice that Jacob, she refers to Jacob as her son. Uh, And that's obviously uh, uh, one of the worst things that any parents could do is to show that type of overt favoritism. Verse 7 says, Bring me venison that... And make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now, again, this venison is not deer as we uh, we commonly understand it today, but it's any type of game meat. Uh, and he says, and prepare, make me savory meat. Uh, in other words, prepare it just the way I like it with spices and what have you, uh, that I may bless thee. And she adds something here before the Lord, all caps, L-O-R-D, that is Jehovah, the self-existent one, before my death. Well, that's not exactly what Isaac said, but she thought if she added this blessing was going to be before the Lord, it would it would really convey to Jacob the importance of acting urgently and, of course, following her her commandments strictly, okay? Um, And obviously, it was before the Lord, but that's not what she heard Isaac say. Number eight, verse eight, Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Isaac has given Esau, his firstborn, a commandment or uh, request, if you will, that he go out and, and catch game and prepared the way he likes. Now she's given Jacob a command and he, or commands. Uh, she's about to, I should say, and she wants him to follow them precisely. Verses 9 and 10. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goat, and I will make them savory meat for thy father such as he loveth, and thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. Now, obviously, uh, Rebecca doesn't know whether or not uh, Isaac is about to die now or not. We know Isaac lived for many years longer. In fact, he outlived Rebecca. He lived uh, at least 20 years longer because he was alive when Jacob returns. Um, now, you might ask yourself, well, how? How is she going to deceive uh, Isaac with her savory meat? Uh, and uh, how is she going to make that taste like uh, what he's accustomed to Esau preparing? Well, 
I, I don't think we have to wonder too much about that. Where do you think Esau learned how to prepare the savory meat? Most likely from his mother. Um, whatever I learned how to cook or whatever I know how to cook, I learned pretty much from my mom. I cooked some chili last Friday. I used my mom's recipe. And so no, no doubt the first time he attempted to prepare the game that he had caught, his mom actually taught him. He might have improvised here and there, but basically it was her recipe, uh, I would guess anyway. So again, uh, she wants to uh, have uh, eat uh, uh, Jacob get these kid goats, prepare this. She's going to prepare the savory meat, and then she's going to basically deceive Isaac or have um, Jacob deceive Isaac with the savory meat. And it's uh, it's coinc it's a coincidence, maybe not a coincidence, that Esau was basically duped out of his birthright with food, with the red pottage that uh, Jacob was preparing in the last lesson, they're preparing in the last lesson, and now Esau is in part going to be duped because of uh, the food that is, is prepared uh, for him. Now, between where we leave off here at verse 10 and where we pick up at verse 18, uh, we know that... Uh, uh, there are more detailed instructions given by Rebecca to Jacob as uh, to how to carry out this deception. Uh, Jacob is concerned that uh, if his, his father finds out that he's trying to deceive him, he's going to curse him rather than bless him. And so he's very uh, nervous about this whole sordid affair, you know. But when we get to verse 18, uh a, uh, he is pretty convinced that, hey, he needs to do this to receive the Lord's blessing. No doubt, Rebecca has told uh, Jacob that he is going to be served by the older brother. And so he's probably thinking uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a weird way that he is fulfilling God's will, even though it's involving deception. And, and, and there's a lot that can be said about that. You know, we we know that. God had already foretold that uh, the elder was going to serve the younger and not just not meaning Esau himself, but his descendants were going to serve the descendants of the younger. Uh, and so so was it God's plan uh, to involve deception in accomplishing his ultimate plan? Um uh, you know, th th that's really something that can boggle the mind, you know, because of God's foreknowledge, he knew that deception was going to be involved. And of course, God accomplishes his plans through humans, through flawed and sinful humans. He accomplishes his plans. The death of Christ on the cross. I mean, the death of Christ, him giving his life for the sins of the world. Was there any way, any other way that could have been accomplished other than him being betrayed by Judas and, and turned over by his own to the Romans uh, to be crucified uh, either because of jealousy. I mean, Pilate knew the motives of the, the Jewish leaders that turned him over. Was there any other way? Uh, we don't know. We don't know whether God could have used some other way or not, or whether God, by virtue of his foreknowledge, knew what was going to happen because of the deceptiveness of the human heart, the jealousy of the human heart in terms of uh, Christ being turned over to the Romans. So that's something we could ponder for a lifetime. So let's pick up at verse 18. Verse 18a says, And he came, <clears throat> he came into his father, unto his father and said, My father. And now he recognizes, even though they're twins, his voice is, a little different from uh, from Esau's, and he's, he he wants to speak as little as possible. So this this word actually translated from the Hebrew to the English, my father, is really one word. He says, my father, and part B says, and he said, here am I, who art thou? So Jacob already uh, is suspicious. Something is a, he, he doesn't recognize, uh, or maybe if he does, uh, he's he's questioning uh, who this is. So he says, who art thou? 
And then, of course, uh, the lying begins. Verse 19, and Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I've done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. Now, that's, a, of course, a full-blown lie. He says he's Esau, his firstborn, and he's done what his father has told him to do. He's got this venison. He's prepared it. He wants him to sit and eat it and bless him. Now, um, uh, so, so Jacob, his eyes are, are failing. He's nearly blind. He can't wreck it. And even if he, he could see a little better, uh, he probably couldn't make out, uh, he couldn't distinguish the two unless he was right up on them, uh, because they were twins. Uh, of course, not, not, not identical, of course, paternal. Uh, now he, uh, a verse we skip over, verse 20, and let's just, let's just pull verse 20 in here. And verse 20 says, our lesson skips over it. It says, And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, found this venison or this game so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God, thy God, not his God, not our God, but thy God brought it to me. So he invokes the name of the Lord. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, that's a sin. That was a sin right there, lying on God. And, uh, and of course, uh, Jacob, I'm sorry, Isaac, uh, is partly persuaded, most likely because of that. So then verse 21 says, And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son whether thou be my very son Esau or not. In other words, Jacob's, I mean, Isaac's not convinced by what Jacob has said. Uh, he recognizes the voice, as a matter of fact, as we'll find out later. And he, he, he doesn't recognize it as the voice of Esau. He can't reconcile that with the fact that he's brought this meat, this game meat, and, and prepared it the way he likes because uh, he most likely thought that he and Esau had a private, he had a private audience with Esau and that no one overheard his instruction to Esau. So the fact that uh, Esau has, uh, ob uh, he thinks it's Esau, has obeyed his command is uh, kind of deceiving his ears. Now he can't see, all five senses are going to be involved in this deception here. Uh, he can't see. Uh, he's heard a lie. He's also heard what, he, what we're going to re realize in a minute is the voice of Jacob and not Esau. So his ears are involved here. And so Jacob lies and the, verse 21 says, and Isaac said again, come near. I pray thee that I may see if you're really my son. And of course, 22 and Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, uh, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob's voice. So Isaac recognized his second born his voice, and it was Jacob's voice. But the hands are the hands of Esau. Now, I don't know how Rebecca wrapped these goat skins on his wrist and his hand, but she obviously did a pretty good job and didn't have to tie them. Maybe she put some some type of grease or something on there to hold uh, the, the skins in place. I'm not really sure. But she did a really good job of making uh, this hair appear to be the hair of Esau. And the other thing you have to wonder, he, Esau had to be a pretty hairy guy. So he feels his hands and he, and, he, and he says that he convinced by touch, the sense of touch, that these are the hands of Esau. So, so far the sight's been involved, which he doesn't really have. The hearing's been involved. He re he's He's... Suspicious because the voice is not of Esau, the voice is of Jacob. Uh, but he also has heard a lie that uh, he's he's gone and he's done what Isaac commanded or told him to do. Uh, now then, verse 23 says, and he discerned him not or he recognized him not. 